things as of right now. Davis, UCSB, both at 2-0. and There you see Hawaii at 1-0 and already here in the opening weekend. Everybody has at least one loss except for the top three in the Big West. We talked to Robin about the conference. You got, I mean, you got the Long Beach, Cal Poly, Santa Barbara, Bakersfield too is coming up. It is what it is, like in women's volleyball, whoever, like you gotta show up and you gotta show up the day, of, that day. And then whoever's playing the best is gonna win. You know, it's like everybody just puts Hawaii like over here and like, oh, we gotta beat Hawaii. I mean, like, right, you guys got targets on your back. So nobody else is gonna be like, oh my God, we gotta win. Like, yeah, you guys are gonna be like, yeah, we don't wanna lose. You know, it's that, that stress, like all the other people we play, it's like, yeah, we ain't losing to Hawaii. Who's Hawaii? You know, and now it's gonna be a little bit different because everybody just wants to play their really best against us for some reason. We always know that we kind of have that target on our back and we have to have a chip on our shoulder every day that we go out there. Um, our conferences, we don't have, you know, six, five girls, six, six girls up there, but some of the teams we play are the scrappiest, just most gritty teams, and so it just, takes so much out of us that we have to, every single day we come in, we have to pretend we're playing that championship match. Every match matters. Well, when you look at the preseason coaches, pull Hawaii overwhelming favorites to win the Big West again, but there are a handful of teams that I think threaten Hawaii. UCSB, who's playing very well, UC Davis. We saw Long Beach State in the first weekend, knockoff uh, defending national champ, Texas. Uh, it's not gonna be an easy path to another title. No, it's not. And you know what? It's not going to be easy also because it doesn't matter what your record is. There's a Big West tournament this season, so they're heading out to play in that. And that's really what will determine the automatic bid into the NCAA playoffs. Yeah, and I think one of the things that we heard from that package and listening to Robin Sambites was really everyone's going to come to play against Hawaii. And so while a team may not have the best record overall, they may have their best night of the season against the Rainbow Wahine. Uh, I remember when I was on the coaching staff, we saw that multiple times where a team who we thought was just going to be a sleeper. And these are times where we had Kim Willoughby and Lily Kaumoko on the outside. Uh, Fresno State took us to five. So you never know uh, on a given night. You can't just expect to go out there and win because every team is wanting to beat Hawaii. Yeah, you got to bring your A game because the other side is going to bring theirs every single time. Just like the two guys that will be calling this afternoon's matchup, they always bring their A game. It's Kano and C-Mac, guys. <laughs> That's debatable. Thanks a lot, Scott. Yes, next to C-Mac, Chris McLaughlin, I'm Kano Alehi. And you heard the corner crew talking about uh, some of the performances the other night, including Stella Damey making her Hawaii debut. And boy, what a debut it was. But that was indicative of one of the goals that Robin Amo had setting out for this opening weekend in Big West play is if her team was able to handle business appropriately, that maybe she would be given the latitude to play some of these lesser experienced players, get them some of that valuable time under the game lights. Uh, how much of an initiative here tonight will that be, you think, for Robin Elmo? I think it'll be the exact same thing, Canola. Um, Robin wants to develop her bench. You know, you never know what's gonna happen in mid-season and late season to injuries, academic problems, uh, sickness. All those things can come up, so if you have a developed bench, you have a much greater chance of surviving the season better than if you just play the same six all the time, which some coaches do. Well, they're going up against the CSUN team, and you talk to head coach, or the, uh, I guess his, his exact title is Director of Women's Volleyball, um, John Price, and you talk to them about the level of frustration this season. They have played an awful lot of very close competitive matches. In fact, they've played six five-setters, including on Tuesday against uh, Bakersfield. They have lost all six. Uh, this season could be looking, especially from a win-loss standpoint, entirely different right now going into this match. Yeah, he, he just told me right, a few minutes ago, he said, you know, we could be 12-0 and and not 2-10 and very easily. Uh, we just had a lot of breaks, didn't go our way. Uh, the other team would play better with us at certain points in the match, and therefore we're 2-10. Two, we're two but I'm telling you, he says, we're pretty good, especially if we have Taylor Orshoff in the lineup, but... Uh, he's the, you know, she's their best outside hitter, but she got hurt. Might play tonight. Yeah. That's the, that's the word we just got. If she plays, it could be a very different battle. Yeah, uh, she has missed the last three games with a dislocated kneecap, but she is good to go, has been cleared. Now it's a bit more of a pain threshold type of thing. Maybe depends a little bit of how the match proceeds as well. They do have another weapon in Carissa Barron who can do just about everything. A veritable two-way player. Sets, hits, blocks, has 
two triple doubles already on the season. Who, people would just die to have one triple double in their whole career. But but uh, Chris Barron's really a special athlete. You, know, you can see how she, her assist, she's got about 5%, and she's got kills, you know, 2% <laughs> blocks, and her digs a couple percent. And you add that up over a period of time, she's going to get double-doubles every night and maybe a triple-double every once in a while, but exceptional athlete, really fun to watch. Well, Hawaii played two nights ago. CSUN played all the way back on Tuesday. They've been in town for a couple of days. We'll see how this one plays out as the Rainbow Wahine take on the Matadors of CSUN. We'll see you at first serve. Let's send it back over to the corner. All right, thanks a lot, guys. It should be a fun afternoon of volleyball, Hawaii and CSUN. Don't go anywhere, because when we come back, we're going to hear from Jackie Matias. Growing up, I was for sure always at all the games, watching a lot, it was so much fun. But I never really had too much intention of staying home. Like, I think just going away and that whole aspect of the mainland was really intriguing at first. But later in my recruiting process, I started communicating with coaches and the more and more we talked, it just, it seemed right to stay home. And it just, I'm great, I'm really happy, yeah. My parents love it too, of course. Oh, the words of Jackie Matias. There you see the red shirt saw a freshman center for the University of Hawaii getting an opportunity this year in her freshman campaign to show that she can be relied on to run Hawaii's offense. I think Jackie more has a setter's the setter's mind. I think growing up here playing Hawaii versus Kate growing up in Texas, two different people like setter's minds. You know, Kate, like I said from before, she had these hitters, you know, they're all playing at like UCLA, SC, like, you know, and it's just like, let me just launch it up and like, go do whatever you need. Don't really need to figure out like how to create points. This is just my opinion. Everybody else can have a different one. But she grew up with that, like her entire club, right? And then you have Jackie who's got five foot, like eight middle blockers in Hawaii with like five, maybe five to six outsides or, or that kind of play with the offense and figure out like how to create points. In practice, I'm definitely kind of loud in the gym. I'm very loud. I like to talk a lot, bring energy and just making sure that I'm giving my teammates feedback and also letting them know like when it's my wrong or how I can help them always make sure that we're just keep moving forward in our practices. Um, definitely still working on just consistency, right? Like that's always striving to just be better in that aspect, but for sure just keeping the energy up and trying to push our team along the way. Well, let's take a look at the numbers for Jackie Matias out of Punahou. There you see she's appeared now in six matches. The number, she hasn't been in a whole lot, but 1.67 assists, and she also has a service ace as well. And you, you look at Jackie Matias' family. She comes from an unbelievable family, both her father, her grandfather, local baseball legends, and I think she liked to carve out her own name in a different sport. Yeah, you know, she's really uh, creating her own identity and, and being more and getting more comfortable being a setter in this program, it is not an easy position to be a setter on a Robin Almo coach team. Uh, and so she's soaking it all in. She reminds me a lot of Taylor Higgins, another Punahou product setter that led this Hawaii offense, uh, maybe smaller in stature, but someone that really has that kind of knowledge of the game. And the thing about Jackie, she's been playing for a long, long time. She's a student of the game. She's very serious. She says she talks a lot. And maybe she does, but you just got to love that she's got one of the few that has stayed home. And there have been so many great local setters coming out of Hawaii all the way back to Joyce Kaapuni, mm -hmm. Tita Ahuna, Mahina Eleneki. I mean, those are years ago, but I'm just saying, in the long run, there's a lot of Robin Amo. You know, these setters are really, they learn to play a smaller person's game, but they really, like Robin said, they have to think a little bit more and really uh, do the chess game a little bit more because they don't have those big powerful six foot four outside hitters, you know, throughout their careers. Well, you, you look at Jackie and, and, and she's getting experience now this year. Is that just the main thing she needs is just more reps? I think one of the things that maybe she was struggling with earlier on in the season was just overall location. And that's where Kate Lang maybe has the experience and she's a little more consistent with her location. But I think as the season has progressed, uh, you know, Jackie has stepped in and helped Hawaii multiple times when Hawaii is struggling. So I think they feel much more comfortable bringing her in. And every time she's gotten on the court, she has made things happen. She is not afraid. She served six straight points last night. She goes to the middle. She sets 
the backcourt. She knows. She's a student of the game, and she knows what she's doing. Yeah, we're probably more than likely going to see her out there at some point here this afternoon. It is Hawaii and CSUN on a Sunday afternoon. We'll take a break and get you ready for the matchup. And back at Simplify Arena, Stan Sheriff Center, a rare four o'clock first serve, Hawaii, and the Matadors of CISA. Well, let's take a look at the team stat comparisons to this point. There you see the records, Hawaii City at eight and four, and the Matadors at two and 10, though they could easily be 10 and two. They've played a number of five set matches, though the numbers, as you would suspect, uh, favor the University of Hawaii in just about every category except for service aces, where CISA has a bit of an advantage. All right, Ryan, tell us about the Matadors. Well, taking a look at some of their go-to players, you see Leah Miller, she will be the opposite attacker. She's averaging 2.23 kills per set. You also have Starkey, uh, also a player that you watch. She's the outside hitter, going to be asked to do a lot in helping them keep uh, Hawaii, uh, keep the Matadors in this. And of course, Baron, the all everything for, you see those numbers, 240. And as uh, Chris and Kanoa were talking about, Two triple doubles are ready this season. She's going to have to have a big night tonight. Lisa, tell us all about the Rainbow Wahine. Well, we got the usual suspects, as Ryan would say, but, you know, Amber IGD, Caitlin Alexander, and Riley Wagner. I want to add my own, and that's Kennedy Evans. And Kennedy Evans has been doing a phenomenal job for this team. She's hitting in the high 300s, and, you know, she goes a little under. Uh, she's not noticed as much as these other players, but I think she's a huge link to the success of this team so far. All right, time now for the watch list. It is sponsored by Heineken, and Hawaii would like to go to 2-0, obviously, to start the Big West Conference season. Who are some of the players or the player you're going to keep an eye on for Hawaii tonight if they're successful? Well, I think I want to watch Kendra Ham. We saw her really develop over the last few games, and last uh, the, excuse me, on Friday night put together a really nice stat line. I think one of the things the coaching staff wants to see out of Kendra Ham is consistency both offensively and defensively. If she can have a solid night, I think she could solidify her role in that opposite position. And I have a couple. I'm sorry, but I think Riley Wagner, I think she's a player we need to watch because her hitting offensively has been a little weaker than it has in the past. Um, so I'm thinking that she's going to have to up her offensive game for the team to be successful on the outside, as well as the team in general. The team, I'm talking about the whole team. The energy that they felt two nights ago in this arena, the support that each one of them had for every player that went in was phenomenal. It changed, the whole arena changed when they watched players go in. And uh, I think it just it was a complete game changer. You know, one thing, Ryan, we've seen with this Wahine team, they got a lot of depth on the outside. And, and Lisa, you mentioned Riley Wagner, and she has struggled hitting percentage-wise. She is absolutely the glue, but Maybe against some of the teams in the Big West, they could experience, experiment and just have Riley maybe play the back row and bring in somebody in the front to, to hit. What yeah, think? I think we, we saw that on Friday night. We can continue to see a little bit more of those combinations between uh, all of the outside hitters. I think another player that we could also see play backcourt could be Taylor Ikenaga. We did not see her play uh, on Friday night, but of course we know from the experience that she is uh, really had in that libero position that she can more than all hold her own in the backcourt. So she could be another player that could play a defensive role for the outside hitters. Were you guys surprised? I was a bit that Stella Adami played uh, on Friday night. I had a feeling because she hadn't played in any of the non-conference matches. I had a feeling maybe they redshirted her, but I, I'm not sure what the rule is at this point in time. If it's too late, if they still can, do you, do you guys know? Well, I mean, at this point, I think that she is going to be used and utilized. I mean, I think that she is a player that can come off the bench and they just more about getting her game time experience and uh, you look at the numbers right there, 800 for a two-set outing. Uh, pretty good numbers yeah. for someone. I don't know that you want to redshirt if that, those are the types of numbers that she continues to put up. And the other part of that is, you know, she's in that role where she has to take care of the pass first. She's not only a hitter, but she's pretty phenomenal. She's athletic. She's young. Her future is very bright with this program. One thing Robin said last Friday after the match was that she'd like to see this team block a little bit better. They got a lot of touches. How do you think the blocking game affects CSUN tonight? Well, I mean, I think one of you all, Hawaii is always wants to do better blocking. I feel like that's always one of those areas that they can continue to improve on. The defensive in the backcourt is always what they're known for. But I think one of the things that Hawaii just tends to do is sometimes 
uh, that they reach a little too high. They try to go up and they get burnt inside. Uh, these Big West teams aren't going over Hawaii's block. So really for Hawaii, it's all about hand positioning and staying low and tight, not necessarily trying to reach high and get high touches because there are very few players that are going to be hitting over the block at this point. All right, the three of us will be back with this one. Pal, but coming up next, it's the anthem. Hawaii Ponui and the serve to start the match with Kanoa and C-Max calling all the action. With the Pizza Hut Big Dinner Box, however you want a dinner, we got you covered. Big time. I do it big. I do it the big, big dinner box. Two pizzas, breadsticks, and wings or pasta. Oh, hello. There's nothing I love more than being a farmer. Every day, I get to care for my sheep and feel connected to the land. Believe it or not, I think it makes me better at my other job, managing Bank of Hawaii's branches in Hilo. Because like farming, banking is all about caring for the needs of customers and businesses in our local community so they can grow and reach their fullest potential. I'm Steven Sylvester, and I'm proud to work for a company that gave a farmer like me the chance to make a difference in my community. Hey, let's get out and enjoy our islands. Hanging with Ohana is the best, especially when you're in the eight passenger pilot, the perfect island ride that's rugged and ready for wherever family fun takes you. Add a new pilot to your Ohana today. Part of KBB's best overall value brand for 2023. See a Hawaii Honda dealer today. And tell them Henry sent you. I do it big. With the Pizza Hut Big Dinner Box, however you want a dinner, we got you covered. Big time. I do it big. I do it the Big Dinner Box. Two pizzas, breadsticks, and wings or pasta. Oh, hello. At Spectrum News, we're committed to strengthening the fabric of local communities through our coverage. Watch your favorite local sports on your smart TV and connected devices, streaming live 24-7 on Spectrum Sports and OC16. With on-demand weather forecasts and news that matters on the Spectrum News mobile app. Keeping you informed throughout the day. Spectrum News, your community connection. Exclusively for Spectrum customers. Now available on your favorite devices. I'm Dara. And I'm Al. And, and you're, you're watching, watching Spectrum, Spectrum OC16. OC16. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of our national anthem and Hawaii Ponawi. They have been working hard. They were here Thursday night. They were here last night at the Clarence T.C. Ching Athletics Complex. Put your hands for the University of Hawaii Rainbow Wahine Pep Band.
presentation of Gwen Nakamura, director, University of Hawaii Rainbow Wahine and Pep Band. Aloha Kiakaula. Good early evening, everyone. The Rainbow Ohana welcomes you to Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center here on the campus of the University of Hawaii in majestic Manoa for tonight's Big West Conference Women's Volleyball Contest, matching the CSUN Matadors versus the reigning Big West Champions, your Hawaii Rainbow Wahine. <laughs> Introducing the CSUN Matadors starting lineup. At defensive specialist, a 5'6 freshman from Bakersfield, California, number two, Paige Sentes. And outside hitter, a six foot junior from Bakersfield, California, number 13, Perry Starkey. And middle blocker, a 6'2 junior from Simi Valley, California, number 14, Taylor Hunter. At Libero, a 5'8 senior from Valencia, California, number 16, Kelsey Knudsen. At Opposite, a 5'6 freshman from Manhattan Beach, California, number 17, Taylor Dunlap. At Middle Blocker, a 6'2 freshman from Fontana, California, number 20, Aie Okolo. And at center, 5'11 junior from Bakersfield, California, floor captain number 22, Carissa Barron. The assistant coaches are Troy Magorian, Ari Homayan, and Kylie Miller. Head coach for the Matadors, John Price. La, la, yeah. la, la, wait till I give my money right. I had a dream I could buy my way to heaven when I woke and spit that on a necklace. So oh God, I'll be back in a second. Man, it's so hard not to act reckless. I guess the money should have changed them. I guess I should have forgot where I came from. Excuse me, was you saying something? And now, meet and greet the starting lineup for your Hawaii Rainbow Wahine! At middle blocker, a 6'3 senior from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, number three, Amber I.G.D. And outside hitter, a six foot senior from Dublin, Ohio, floor captain number six, Riley Wagner. At center, a 5'10 junior from Keller, Texas, number 10, Kate Lang. At middle blocker, a 6'2 senior from Twin Falls, Idaho, number 12, Kennedy Evans. At libero, a 5'7 senior from Kalamazoo, Michigan, number 13, Talia Edmonds. And outside hitter, a 6'0 sophomore from Alpharetta, Georgia, number 17, Kaelin Alexander. And at opposite, a six foot senior from San Diego, California, number 18, Kendra Hamm. The assistant coaches are Skylin Engelman, Nick Costello, and Kaleo Baxter. Head coach of the Rainbow Wahine, Robin Amo. Her match high 12 kills, Amber Igd guided the Rainbow Wahine to a sweeping victory over Cal State Bakersfield Friday in Hawaii's Big West opener. 12 Rainbow Wahine saw action that night, including freshman pin hitter Stella Adami, who tallied four kills and no errors in her UH debut. 
Coming up, it's back to the TerraFlex for a Sunday afternoon affair between the Matadors of CSUN and the Hawaii Rainbow Wahine. Canola, he's sitting next to Chris McLaughlin. C Mac, take us through the Kaiser Permanente. Keys to the match. For CSUN, it's all six cylinder. John Price will need every player to bring their A game, especially with their top outside hitter, Taylor Orshaw, out with a recent injury, but may see some action tonight. Way, they've got to show respect. Coach Robin Amo wants her team to get better at respecting and playing hard versus opponents with losing records. We certainly saw that effort from Hawaii. Two nights ago against Bakersfield, Rainbow Wahine hitting 323 as a squad, and they were able to, as we mentioned moments ago, get some of the lesser experienced players some time on the floor. CSUN, another battle here. 2 and 10 overall, 0 and 1 in the Big West. They lost to Bakersfield back on Tuesday. Hawaii, 8 and 4 overall, off to a winning start in league, and Amber Igidi off to a positive start, as tends to be the case. Igidi, who is tops in the Big West Conference in hitting percentage, hitting a fat 404. And she saw the blockers there lined up on her. Nowhere to go, so she just tipped it over the blockers, found the open area on the other side. She was a third in the conference in kills per set. Back set swung on by Carissa Barron. Good dig there by Alexander. And right Wagner with her first swing hits it wide. So the Matadors get the point. I like the way Riley, Riley Wagner took a good healthy swing at that rather than bump it over. Gives her, her team a better chance to score. Leah Miller now on the floor for CSUN. Middle set, that's Igidi. It's rattled around. Wagner couldn't get it on the overpass. So now from the outside, Perry Starkey hit it into the net. And so Hawaii up 2-1 here in the first. The Hawaiian Financial FCU starting lineups will be scrolling at the bottom of your screen. Kendra Ham again getting the start at the opposite hitter position. She's now behind the line to serve. Solid the other night, four kills, but hit 444 to go along with a handful of digs against Bakersfield. Nigidi on the block there in the middle. Starkey the tip shot. Nigidi able to come up with the up. Here's Kaylin Alexander from the back row, dug up over the net, and then Nigidi. Maybe a bit of a paintbrush, but the job was done. Paige Sintas did a great job of popping that ball, keeping the, the ball on her own side of the net, but just too much Alexander. If she gets a good run up and gets a good swing, ooh, it's pretty much game over. It's already two kills here for Igidi. Three serving one. Good serve by Ham. High ball bump set goes to Miller. The southpaw swing. Looped it over the block and out. And Hawaii up three here early. And we're going to get a very early timeout from Matador's director of women's volleyball, John Price. We'll take a break as well. Solid start for the Lady Bows. University of Hawaii Sports on Spectrum OC16. Sponsored by your Hawaii Honda dealers. Hey, let's get out and enjoy our islands. Hanging with Ohana is the best. Especially when you're in the eight-passenger pilot. The perfect island ride. That's rugged. And ready for wherever family fun takes you. Add a new pilot to your Ohana today. Part of KBB's best overall value brand for 2023. See a Hawaii Honda dealer today. And tell them Henry sent me. Hey, used to have a silver tooth and I was just a pup. I don't want to catch the feelings, I be trying to see what's up. I let shorty clean the pendants, I'm a diamond in the rough. Hey, first order of a biz, no snitch. And I try to keep it silent, but the kids don't listen. Happy birthday, got another hit, no fish. And tell him, send a watch that I can fit both friends And we used to have a silver too, but I was just a pup Wanna catch the feelings, I be trying to see what's up I let shorty clean the pendants, I been diamond in the rough Ay. Tuesday, Big Blue, Big Red In a high-stakes matchup up north Moana Lua, Kahuku, OI Girls Volleyball Only on OC16, exclusively on Spectrum 
Don't miss a second of the action. Watch Spectrum Sports on the go. The Spectrum News app has the local sports you love and the news and weather that matter most to you. Download today on the App Store or Google Play. Well, not the start that John Price wanted for his CSUN Matador squad, calling the early timeout. They have yet to put down a kill, hitting negative 400. Hawaii up 4-1. But that will break the ice as Perry Starkey, the six-foot junior, who transferred a couple of seasons ago from UC Davis, averaging 2.12 kills per set, finally gets the first kill for CSUN. That was a good swing, hitting the high ball out of the middle. Normally hits on the pins, but that time he tapped out of the middle. Great shot. And serve from way behind the line. Pass there to Leah Edmonds. Here's Alexander from behind the line, but she sends it long. And so back-to-back -back points out of the timeout here for CSUN. Has been a frustrating season for the Matadors. A lot of very competitive matches. In fact, uh, they have played already six five-setters, including on Tuesday against Bakersfield. And guess what? They have lost. All six as that serve goes long. You've got to be frustrated as a coach, you know, come so close so many times. You'd think that the odds would be they'd split, you know, those five sets. It'd be like 3-3. Three, three. Instead, they've gone 0 for 6. Very unusual. And have been playing the last three matches without perhaps their best offensive player in Taylor Orshoff. Who has been out with a knee injury. Is available tonight. We'll see if she gets some action. Kaylin Alexander, that was some heavy action off the palm. What was most impressive about that shot was the fact that the block for CSUN knew where the ball was going. They knew it was going to Alexander. So they went out on the outside and just planted and waited and then four hands went up. But Kaylin is only Kaylin can do. It's a little wrist away shot, sharp and hard. Yeah, averaging 3.4 kills per set, that's fourth best among Big West Conference hitters, and that's a good swing, and there she is, Taylor Orshoff, the 6'1 senior from Riverside, California, missed the last three matches, and John Price says, when she is on the floor, we are a different team. She looked a little bit like Kaylin Alexander there. She had four hands across in front of her, and just a little wrist away shot, buried it. Here's Alexander, that's set a little tight to the pin. It actually goes off of her shoulder. And so Kate Lang, flat-footed, sends it across. Here's Miller, cross court. That one dug up off the shoulder of Kendra Ham. And then Wagner trying to push it to the deep corner. Bump set, Orshoff into the pin it goes. And that one was scrappy and a little sloppy, but Hawaii ultimately gets the point. You just stole the words out of my mouth, Kano. That was a sloppy rally, for sure. Good look there with Robin Amo. Her team off to an eight and four start. Went seven and four through the non-conference slate. A couple of regrettable losses, if you ask her. Certainly Liberty being one, they lost in five on this floor. And then on the road in Texas, losing against TCU after winning the first set. All things considered though, you'd have to say overall a pretty positive run through the non-conference and then of course winning on opening night in league play against Bakersfield on Friday. Amber Igedi with the serve. Here's Miller, the stutter step approach. Easy dig there for Ham. Outside, it's Alexander. And that one pops straight up in the air by Starkey. The set was a little low for Orshoff. It's dug up by Amber. And then over on two goes Lang. Pulled that one out from under her sleeve at just the appropriate time. Kate Lang does not call her own number very often. When she does call her own number, she's usually pretty successful at it. Exchanging smiles with her head coach, Robin Amo. Nine serving four here in the first. Oh, a behind the head middle set to Taylor Hunter. She's second behind Amber Igedi in hitting percentage among Big West swingers. Hitting 332 on the year, 6'2", a redshirt junior from Simi Valley, California. Number one in blocking in the Big West so far. Lang going to Kennedy Evans in the middle. And she was able to go across her body on that one. Didn't exactly find it in the sweet spot, but it was effective. Lisa Strand was singing her praises in the Game On show, and that's why. She thinks that Kennedy Evans could really be a big difference maker on this year's squad. 
There's Kate Lang, that lollipop serve that she has really gotten good at, and then comes up with the dig there. Uh, but it was a little tight to the net, and that time Kennedy Evans probably could have made a go of it against Taylor Hunter in a joust situation. Exactly. She really should have gone up and been aggressive there with both hands and gotten into a joust. So six serving ten. And here is Paige Sentis, 5'6 freshman from Bakersfield, California, on the serve. Lang going backside. Alexander blocked. The cover by Ham goes over the net, and then it's sent right back across the Hawaii side. Evans with no blockers around, free swinging. Really good drive to the center that time by Kennedy Evans. It's obvious that she really wants the ball, so she charges hard right at Kate Lang and was rewarded with a set from Lang. So Hawaii by a handful. They go opposite side on the set. And it is put down successfully by Carissa Barron. Carissa Barron is quite the story. An all-around player, she can set, she can hit, she can dig, puts up some really good numbers in all those categories. In fact, has two triple doubles to her credit this season. Who does that? Crazy. Layla Cedarland, 5'8 junior from Winchester, California, on the serve. Backside said Ham. The block was late in arriving. And Kendra Ham took advantage. Nice decision that time by Kate Lang, sending it to where the front line was not for CSUN. Exactly. Look at this. So she runs one way, sets the other, fools the block a little bit. They're, they're blocked definitely late. And Kendra Ham getting better and better at hitting that line shot. Talia Edmonds with the float serve and counted as an ace. Talia deals one out of the deck. She's the rally starter. When Hawaii needs points, it's kind of uncanny. Talia Edmonds is the start of those rallies. And that's the updated ace number nine now on the season for Talia. They tried to go quick middle set, Amber IGD sends it back. Now high ball outside to Starkey, the tip shot punched up by Ham. And Alexander uh, was a little bit goofy footed there on the approach and was a little nervous about jumping from in front of the line. So I think she got tripped up along the way a couple of times. Yeah, and I think nervous too about running into Kate Lang. Last thing you want to do is bang up your setter. Barrington's pass there. On the outside, that one through the block and down. Riley Wagner. Five kills, six digs the other night against Bakersfield. She's averaging 2.7 put downs on the year at a 151 clip. Whenever the pin hitters get a kill like that, you gotta go up and thank Amber Igedi, not Kate Lang. Because Amber Igedi draws so much yeah. attention in the middle. Maybe thank Talia Edmonds for a pretty solid pass on the serve as well. Exactly. Oh, high and away, the set goes to Wagner. She was expecting the set to be a little bit further in from the pin, so she had to make the adjustment and then just soft touched it over for the point. Former Ohio Gatorade Player of the Year back in 2018. So here is Ham. That one tickles the top of the take, almost went down. Now Miller. Caught it fat, was there a touch? No touch. Hawaii gets the point. And it is now 16 serving eight. Rainbow Wahine have the Matadors doubled up, and so John Price gonna signal for a timeout. Hawaii hitting 353 compared to triple zeros on the other side here in set one. At Kaiser Permanente, our connected team approach allows us to understand the different aspects of your care. The level of communication we have, it's coordinated, multidisciplinary care. It's really the future of medicine. It's not just patient-centered care, it's patient-driven. We're not just treating conditions. Understanding the whole person builds trust and leads to better outcomes. We all work together to care for all that is you. Kaiser Permanente. When you're finally ready for a new home, happily ever after isn't a given. It's a decision, a determination to put in the work, to make your own way. Follow your instincts. When you find the one, you'll know. And you'll need to be ready. First Hawaiian Bank will be there through all the twists and turns, using everything we've learned to find the best path for you. So you can stop dreaming and start moving. Bank on the best. 
First Hawaiian Bank. It all starts with yes. There's nothing I love more than being a farmer. Every day, I get to care for my sheep and feel connected to the land. Believe it or not, I think it makes me better at my other job, managing Bank of Hawaii's branches in Hilo. Because like farming, banking is all about caring for the needs of customers and businesses in our local community so they can grow and reach their fullest potential. I'm Steven Sylvester, and I'm proud to work for a company that gave a farmer like me the chance to make a difference in my community. Welcome back. Let's go inside the numbers presented by Long's Drugs. These are the two numbers, 233 and 125. Assists and kills for CSUN setter Carissa Barron, the team leader in both categories. Again, uh, just more evidence of her all-around volleyball game. We mentioned the two triple-doubles this season. She has eight triple-doubles for her career. And now Jackie Matias, the redshirt freshman setter, in and back to serve here for Hawaii. Oh, the block is up by IGD. Here's Miller from the opposite side off the block. Chased down there by Tally Hawkes. Matias tried to set up Alexander in the back row, wasn't quite on target. And then that one was to EA Okolo, 6-2 red shirt frosh from Fontana, California. Great swing by EA that time, making Hawaii pay for the free ball they gave him. And that set by Barron was Nectar. So nine serving 16 here in set one. Starkey sends it across. Edmonds pops it straight up. Set from Matias to Wagner. Through the fingers of the block and down. Molly Wagner showing that she's got more shots than just a typical cross court shot from the right hand side. She's got that line shot off the hands as well. Again, good up there, Matias. High ball bump set goes to Alexander. Tried to avoid the block. Did so, but unfortunately sent it out. Alexander, who saw her five match double double streak snap the other night. She was one kill and one dig away from keeping it going. Had nine put downs, nine digs against Bakersfield. Pretty good streak to have going. Oh, how about that serve? How about that layout pass by Alexander? And then Hawkes lays into it, and she gets the kill. Tally Hawkes, who has seen her playing time diminish a little bit here in the last couple of weeks. But we have seen flashes of brilliance throughout this season, her first as a Rainbow Wahine. She's making the most of a little bit of time she's getting with shots like that. Season out of system. Cross court bump said though a pretty good one there to Miller. Got blocked back. Now on the other side, it's Orshoff blocked and roofed. Kennedy Evans in the thick of things, and Hawaii has its largest lead of the first stanza. First block of the night by either side. Delivered by mostly Kennedy Evans, but also a little bit of Tally Hawkins there. <laughs> getting in the match. We did not see her, 12 Rainbow Wahine playing the other night for Hawaii. We did not see Taylor on the floor. So good to see the Moanalua alum, junior out of Honolulu, in action here on the first. And that was some good wood from Leah Miller, six foot sophomore from Las Vegas, Nevada. Transfer from Arizona State, played in 49 sets in her lone season with the Sun Devils last year and John Price, Director of Women's Volleyball says that uh, she has the potential to be an all-conference type of player. Now we're going to have a rotation violation by Hawaii. That's going to give a freebie over to CISA. Hmm. And you know, though, that's not going to make Robin none too pleased. I think Jackie Matias just ran in a little bit too early. Overlap with Kelly Kelly Kanaga. Served uh, by Taylor Dunlap goes into the net. So Hawaii reaches the 20 point mark. Ham comes back into the match. Kate Lang comes back into the match and she will be back to serve. Kate Lang, who has won each of the first four Big West Conference Setter of the Week honors to start this season. 
How about that serve? Chased down by Orshaw. From off the net, the swing by Barron is dug up by Lang. So here's Edmonds, setting it up for Ham. And how about a hammer? Nice bump set from Tilly Evans as well, but boy, Henry Ham just unloads on this. Takes a nice last two steps, really explosive. That resulted in a nice jump and good cross court hit. Oh, the block is up on Barron. Kennedy Evans jumping up next to Alexander saying, uh-uh. Barron trying to tool the outside hand of Alexander, to, but Alexander would have none of it. How about the way Kate Lang mixes up her serves? Speed, trajectory, all of that, and then the diving save to boot. And then Alexander lights it up, but what a dig in the back row there by Perry Stark. A free chance here for Hawaii. Alexander, cross court and in. Kaylin catches it flush. Well, she gets enough, enough opportunities. All it takes is uh, like two, maybe three at most, and she's gonna bury it if she's got that many tries. That's four straight points here for the Rainbow Wahine. They lead by 11. High and away, the set goes to Barron. Diving save Edmonds. Alexander, the roll shot. Punched up in the air by Dunlap. Sent back by Evans, but it'll stay alive on the CSUN side. We got a joust above the tape. Ham sends it over. Now the Matador's on the attack. They go middle, and it is Okolo finishing the long sequence. Make that Taylor Hunter, I should say, finishing the sequence. There's a net violation there in the middle of the rally. I'm surprised Robin Amo isn't challenging. Well, as you say that, she reaches for the challenge card. I think she may have overheard you. <laughs> And so it will be Dixon Chun to check things out here on this replay challenge review. He's the R2. Ryan Sakaguchi is across the way. He's on top of the ladder as the R1. And the line judges Hunter Haliniak and Kerwin Stenstrom. Let's take a look. And there definitely yep. seems to be a net violation there by Carissa Barron. Should be an easy, quick review. I mean, you saw that from over here, C-Mac. Uh -oh. That's what they pay me to do, don't you think? In real time, the eagle eyes of Chris McLaughlin. These old eyes, still got a little left in them. <laughs> right there with the left arm, left wrist. Dixon Chun has seen enough. I think we know where this one is headed. And indeed, net violation, overturned the call. Instead of 13 serving 23, it is Aloha Ball for Hawaii, 24 serving 12. And John Price, I think that's more of a sarcastic applause sent yeah, in the direction of Dixon Chun. I think it was. You see him talking to his assistant, Ari Homayan, of course making a bit of a return to this campus, former University of Hawaii Beach volleyball standout. In her second year on the staff for CSUN, has coached both indoor and on the beach. As Lang blasts it long on the Loha ball, but Hawaii still comfortably in front here. And Paige Sentis will come in and will serve for CSUN. And that's how set one will conclude. Hawaii hits 360 as a team. John, Fry John Price's squad negative 031. And Hawaii wins running away 25-13. They'll swap sides set two. Coming up, Hawaii Honda dealers highlight reel. And Hawaii hit 360 as a squad in set one. C-Mac and a whole lot of players getting in on the fun, including Riley Wagner and Kennedy Evans. Yeah, what was most impressive was 
five players had two kills or more. That's called a, a well-set offense, good distribution. Kennedy Evans coming of age, getting better and better night after night. Yeah, two kills for Kennedy on three swings, also a pair of blocks. Hawaii takes set one, 25-13, so they swap sides. And you also have Alan Gershing in the rotation here to get things started in the second frame for the Rainbow Wahine. 6'2 junior from Germany, transfer from Youngstown State, had her best performance as a Wahine on Friday against Bakersfield. Season high three kills on seven swings, hit 429. So Hawaii getting 11 players in already. And we've yet to start the second set. So I guess it was, as we alluded to during the pregame, an objective on the part of Robin Amo, depending on the flow of the match, to get some run for a healthy amount of roster players. To give their quality, meaningful time. Kendra Ham has to chase down that shanked pass by Alexander. So advantage here for CSUN. And they go to Taylor Hunter. And she knows what to do with it. That was impressive. Great delivery by Taylor Dunlap. And Taylor Hunter just hammering it home there. The 31 set. Great celebration as well. Good shot. Oh, Alexander got handcuffed a bit on that serve again. Gershing, good off-speed swing. Now Hawaii with a chance here. They work the advantage to their side. IGD popped up in the air by Dunlap. And it's going to be Starkey, but she hits it into the net. CSUN hit negative 0-31 in that first set. Had seven kills and eight errors. How about the side out percentage? Why 84% of the time they side out. CSUN 44%. Well, that bump set tight to the net, and we're going to have a net violation go against the Matadors. And Perry Starkey kind of fall through a little bit too much into the net. And with the serve, a little line drive serve. I'm set by Dunlap. And that one is looped out by Starkey. And so quickly, 3-1 in favor of Hawaii here in the second. This has been bit of what John Price described to us when we talked to him earlier in the week, what this team has experienced in most nights, where they have played good volleyball in stretches, but it has been such a fluctuation. And a lot of self-inflicted wounds as well along the way. How about over half their matches? Seven times they've gone five sets. Seven times out of 12. That's uncanny. You won't see that anywhere else in the country. They're going to run the slide to Igedi. She's blocked back. Lang with the cover. So bumps it the other way to Gershing through the block. How about the dig there by Hunter? Over the net, though. And Igedi packs it in. And Igedi had all that experience with the collegiate national team. Had some good time in Anaheim watching and playing with the best in the country. Just made her better and better for plays like that. And another monster performance against Bakersfield. Great back set there, but Barron couldn't put it down. Behind the headset to AI. And Amber smacks it off the block and out. I love the way they're starting to run Amber at different spots on the net, rather than just run her in front all the time, but run a 30 run, which is between the, the left front and the middle. Run that quick, that, the quick set, the one. Run the uh, back one right by the or what they call a tight slide. And run, her, and run her on the, the wide slide as well. The way she's going almost antenna to antenna, making her more difficult to block. That swing by Okola, pretty difficult to block as well. Redshirted last year as a true freshman, four-year varsity player at Etiwanda High School in Rancho Cucamonga, California. Three serving five, and that's an out serve. The service errors for CSUN, four. Two on the Hawaii side, each team with an ace. You know, I like the fact that it, CSUN's being aggressive on their serves. Six serving three. Oh, 
How about that set? That was an interesting play. Perry Starkey, middle of the net, but somewhat off of the string, was able to still put it down for the kill. Here comes the number one outside, Orshaw, into the game, playing front left now. I guess her dislocated knee must be mending quickly. Yeah, she's looking all right out there. High ball set, Alexander through the block and down. That was overpowering from the sophomore from Alpharetta, Georgia. A pretty good block up there, four hands across and Kaylin Alexander unafraid to challenge that block. And she kind of just moved that left hand of Okolo out of the way. Orshoff, the set was off the mark. Evans ping-ponged it back over. Now Orshoff gets a true swing at it. She is stuffed. It's Kendra Ham jumping up next to Evans. Evans got the gist of it, it appeared. And the Manoa Roofing Company putting on the hard hats here in set two. Kendra Ham, a six-footer there on the outside, taking line. Kendi Evans, 6'2", block in the middle. It's a pretty good block, pretty good size. Here's Miller. Yeah, another avoidance swing there. Tried to go high hand, but sends it long. Best jumper on the team, according to John Price. You can definitely see the bounce. More for her, as far as achieving her potential, will rely on just kind of learning the different shots. I will say that's a full of diving save, Alexander. Here's Ham. That was heavy handed. Now Okolo over on two. And it works out. Looks like work play by Okolo that time. Being it over on two. Had she tried to set it there, it would have been very awkward. I'm not sure she would have had much success, but clearly a lot of success on that. Putting the ball over on two. As he meets in with the serve and forces the overpass, and Taylor Orshaw, fifth year with the program, knew exactly what to do with it. All Big West honorable mention back in 2021. He was actually recruited by Long Beach and UC Davis. Here's Evans, dug up by Knudsen, joust above the tape. And a free ball coming over the net. Lang with options, going backside to Alexander, tried to take line, missed it wide, point for CSUN. And they're within two here in the second frame. CSUN making a little run here. And doing so with the grad transfer from BYU, Kelly Knudsen behind the service line. John Price just beams about what she has brought from a culture standpoint to this program. Kennedy Evans able to handle that one precisely for a Hawaii point. Once again, Kennedy Evans, if she doesn't get the perfect set, she'll still find a way to get the ball over the net, past the blockers. Oh, Alexander into the net. So pretty tight here, certainly by contrast to what we saw about this point in set one. And Taylor Dunlap, 5'6 freshman setter from Manhattan Beach, California. A true frosh. Who has handled the setting responsibilities opposite Carissa Barron. Here's Gershing, oh boy. Call a Gershing with a little extra chili pepper water on it. Well, it took a nice little split block right there. She found the hole and delivered. She's got that international experience playing for the German junior national team. Both beach and indoor. Edmonds forces the overpass and Gershing says thank you very much. We're starting to see a little bit of comfort now being exhibited by Paula Gershing. At 6'2", she's starting to feel a little more uncomfortable, more comfortable at the net. Tapping that one down. Outside, a swing by Barron into the antenna. Point for Hawaii, and they're up a handful. And again, look who's behind the service line as Hawaii makes this little surge. It's Talia Edmonds. Uncanny how she continues to do that. 
three straight Rainbow Wahine points. Down the line it goes. CSUN out of system. Barron with the swing. She's blocked back. Orshaw from off the net and she hits it out. And this is the largest lead for Hawaii here in set two. It was a two point differential just moments ago. Hawaii has scored four straight. Another good serve by Edmonds. Sent over by Dunlap, but outside of the antenna, it appeared. But they're going to call it a CSUN point, but hold the phone. <laughs> and conversation ensuing here between Dixon Chun and Ryan Sakaguchi. Robin Amo did a pirouette in frustration, thinking, how did you call that in? <laughs> this should be an easy call once they review it. It happened pretty quickly, but understandable how all four officials might not see that. Not all of them had a great angle at it. We have two line judges in on this conversation as well. All right, we have a good angle at this, and it very clearly goes wide of the antenna. Even my eyes were able to see that would have seen that. <laughs> <laughs> they ruled it in, and Robin Almo with uh, a saucy display of emotion as she challenged uh, that call. And this one should be a pretty quick challenge based on the replay we have at our disposal. One of the few times we'll get, I hope, a quick challenge ruling. All I need is one camera angle right <laughs> here. It's this one right here, and it's... Okay, Dixon, it should be done. <laughs> He's already popped off the headset. And yes, it's overturned. <laughs> and a sarcastic applause from the crowd this time. <laughs> A lot of uh, attitude-filled gesticulation here <laughs> at the arena tonight. Hawaii gets the 15 first, so we got a timeout on the floor. Rainbow Wahine, five straight points. They lead by seven. Hey, let's get out and enjoy our islands. Hanging with Ohana is the best, especially when you're in the eight-passenger pilot. The perfect island ride. That's rugged and ready for wherever family fun takes you. Add a new pilot to your Ohana today. Part of KBB's best overall value brand for 2023. See a Hawaii Honda dealer today. And tell them Henry sent Hey, used to have a silver tooth and I was just a pup. I don't want to catch the feelings, I be trying to see what's up. I let shorty clean the pendants, I been diving in the rough. Hey. First order of a biz, no snitch, and I try to keep it silent, but the kids don't listen. Happy birthday, got another hit, no flinch, and I tell them send a watch that I can fit both friends. And we used to have a silver tooth, but I was just a pup. Wanna catch the feelings, I be trying to see what's up. I let shorty clean the pendants, I been diving in the rough. Hey. There's nothing I love more than being a farmer. Every day I get to care for my sheep and feel connected to the land. Believe it or not, I think it makes me better at my other job, managing Bank of Hawaii's branches in Hilo. Because like farming, banking is all about caring for the needs of customers and businesses in our local community so they can grow and reach their fullest potential. I'm Steven Sylvester and I'm proud to work for a company that gave a farmer like me the chance to make a difference in my community. Welcome back. Let's check out tonight's Hyundai head-to-head -head stat line. We are looking at the two side-out rates for CSUN. They have sided out at a 41% clip for Hawaii, 77%. What would you say is the expected range on a usual night, c -Man? Good question. On a usual night, between 68 and 72, right around there, the 70 mark. Hawaii a little above that right now, and CSUN a lot below it. Leah Edmonds, another good serve. It's another ace. And Talia Edmonds is leading the charge from the service line. And she's pumped up about it. And you know, the crowd showing its appreciation as well. You know, she doesn't serve an ace. She's got such a tough floater that moves so much. She pretty much gets the other team out of system almost every time. 
She has three aces here. Out of system again, beyond the three meter line. And then Barron is dug up along the back line by Alexander. High ball set, Gershing blocked back. Good cover there on the other side by Ham. Oh, that middle set to IGD was way below the top of the net. And they're going to call a miss hit against Hawaii that's going to give the point to CSUN. That's a good call. It was she, she took it from her belly button, and brought it up to her chin, and then put it over. That's a little bit of a long hole, wouldn't you say? <laughs> so nine serving 16 here in set two. Lang going high and away, Gershing, little hop, skip, and jump approach, block back. Ham from the other side through the block, punched up in the air by Newson. Barron is dug up two-hand style. IGD in the middle. What a save. Sentis. Good chase down on the second touch by Barron, and we play on. Lang to Gershing. Paul Gershing, a well-kept secret so far. Remember how Robin Amo, Khalil Baxter, and, and company recruited Paula Gershing. She was on the portal, wanted to go somewhere. She had SC and Hawaii on her list. And at the last minute, she went with Hawaii. Two-time All-Horizon League first teamer at Youngstown State. The program's first ever ABCA All-American honorable mention. And she'll get the swing here, off the block and out. And oh boy, if you are one of the other members of the Big West Conference and you're watching this, you're thinking, uh-oh, now we have to think about Paula Gershing in the mix. There's another outside hitter for Hawaii. What's going on? That's four kills on eight swings, no errors for Gershing. Tied for the team lead in kills. New setter on the floor for CSUN, it's Kaya Kanan. As that hit goes out by Barron, and Hawaii expands its lead to Tim. And now we're going to see another substitution for Hawaii, Stella Adami. Stella was stellar the other night with four kills on five swings. She hit 800 in her Rainbow Wahine debut. As the serve by Jackie Matias goes long. And what was incredible about her performance was her first career kill as a Rainbow Wahine was a bump kill. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Leila Cedarlin in and back to serve now for CSA. Oh, here's Hawkes swooping in. What a dig there by Cedarlin. Goes over the net. Matias, middle, IGD. Dug up back over, good save by Adami. Hawkes into the twine. Well, CSUN playing some solid defense on that occasion. Great dig on the CSUN side, I'll tell you. Nigeria just ripped that one. Hawkes looks more comfortable in the left, even though she hit that last one in the twine. Looks more comfortable there than she did on the right side, I think. Up serve gives it right back to Hawaii. 20 serving 11 and it's Gershing back behind the line. Robin Amo kept saying, we just didn't quite have enough time to work with Paula in practice. She was banged up a couple of weeks leading into the season opening weekend. This week though with the normal conference schedule, Friday and Sunday matches, it really gave them the opportunity and latitude to work some skills in practice as that is going to be a Hawaii point. And Paula Gershing, maybe you can add Stella Adami as well. They seem to be the players that benefited from that longer week of practice the most. Absolutely. And you know what else, Camilla? Let's push pressure on oh. Ham and uh, and Riley Wagner on the outside to make sure they keep them on their toes, so to speak. Better competition at the outside is going to make for a better team. Stella had some bad intentions on that overpass. Didn't quite time it the way she envisioned. Pockets from the opposite side. Works the block to her advantage. And Hawaii back up double digits. Nice set from Jackie Matias that time. Right on the money for Hawkes. So now Amber 
back to serve. Tops in the Big West Conference in hitting percentage, third in kills, fifth in blocks. She just can do it all. And she can also serve a pretty good ball too. Tip shot there by Starkey, he played back. Gershing had an open floor with no blockers up, but hit it into the tape. Her first hitting error of the evening of the unforced variety. Set might have been a little low, but Gershing's got to learn how to, how to hit that ball coming out of the back row because that's part of Hawaii's offense now. It's part of their DNA to get out of that back row. Jason Bamis now entering the match, playing in her fourth set of this season. Transfer from Clemson. And here she is in the middle. She has a really high quality arm. If you watch her in practice and certainly by all accounts on the coaching staff, if the set is in the right place, she can lay the lumber. High quality, quality attacker. Doesn't still quite have the total all around game yet, but she's picking it up fast. Hawaii by 10. Middle set, that one hit fat and out by Okolo, but a net violation on Hawaii's side will give the point to CSUN. So Jackie Matias is going to play some front row now. Kate Lang not coming back into the game. Matias is going to finish this game out. Bump set. Adami, that was a tough angle. Got a charitable ricochet from the tape, but it worked out. And Adami back to her swinging ways. Hawaii back to Aloha Ball here in the second. She is a dynamic hitter. 5'11", true freshman from Papillion, Nebraska. Out of Papillion La Vista South High School. And she will serve. Middle set, it is Hunter blocked by Bamis. Bamis again turning it back. The other side, it's Miller. Her roll shot will be dug up. Outside, here's Gershing. Off the block and out. And Hawaii takes set two, 25-14. Paula Gershing with five kills to lead Hawaii in that second set. And in the second game of Big West Conference play, the Rainbow Wahine will have a chance to crack open the broom closet. University of Hawaii Sports on Spectrum Sports, sponsored by... Welcome back. Here are the Pizza Hut match statistics. As you can imagine, pretty one-sided as far as the numbers are concerned. 13 Rainbow Wahine have seen the floor in this one, C-Mac. Yeah, and, and look at the kill percentage. Uh, 333 to negative 052. Uh, CSUN really struggling offensively. Uh, they hit one bright spot, EA Okolo. Uh, she's got four kills, no errors, hitting 400. So, as we welcome you back into Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center, Kanoa Leahy, next to Chris McLaughlin, as we look ahead here into this third set, uh, what would you like to see from this Hawaii side? More Paula Gershing. She had five kills in that set alone. She's starting to get warmed up. She kind of likes this arena, likes these fans. Uh, I think, uh, and hopefully we'll see her out. Yes, she is going to start in this third set, so that'll be fun. Yeah, had a uh, career high three kills the other night. How about uh, give her a new career high here tonight with five kills, hitting 400, and yeah, a bit of a, you could say, coming out party, so to speak, so far for Paula Gershing. Middle set, and that is Okolo dug up by Gershing. Alexander from the back row gets it home. The dynamic approach from behind the line by Kaylin Alexander. That was spontaneous and efficient. Kate Lang putting up a nice little quick set to Kaylin Alexander, Alexander delivering. I think that's going to be one of Hawaii's most potent places where they're going to attack from that back middle by Kaylin Alexander. Oh, the block is up on Carissa Barron. Amber Aichidi next to Paula Gershing saying, ah, pole. Hawaii with block number four on the night. Sun yet to get a block. And that looked like it was all Paula too. Gershing looking awfully confident and comfortable out there on the floor at the moment. Two serving zero here in the third. Barron through the block, slowed it down. 
Oh, how about that second touch by Edmonds, and then from her knees, the dig by Alexander. Gershing! Diving save by Sentis. And a free ball coming over the net. Lang goes to Amber, and she lays the smackdown! Vintage Hawaii volleyball, playing at wall, about six inches off the ground. There's a low one, there's another low one, and then the pop over. Another dig by Alexander. I'll tell you, Kayla Alexander may be the most improved defensive player from year one to year two. What do you think? She's up to seven digs tonight. And that's why she has been playing through all six rotations with regularity these days. Barron finally able to get one down. And Cison on the board here in the third. Playing six rotations, not just because of her defensive abilities, but her ability to hit out of the back row. So here's Carissa Barron. Prepped at Liberty High School, same high school as her teammate Paige Sentis, although in different years. Serve goes out though. And now Kendra Ham. What a story Kendra Ham has been, huh? Started her collegiate career at Cal Poly, played the 2019 season with the Mustangs primarily as a serving specialist, and then found more of a defensive role here with Hawaii in her time in Manoa. Until this year, where she has become more of a regular staple at the opposite spot. Yeah, she, she really came in, into her own on this last road trip where she started on the right side and stayed there the whole time. That's been a revolving door on the right side until Kendra seized it in this last road trip. We had an amazing match against Western Carolina, second game of that three-match road swing. 12 kills, 11 digs. They run the slide to IGD. And that's easy pickings right there. Some low-hanging fruit. I, again, I like the way that Kate Lang is moving Amber IGD around. Moves her all the way to the antenna there for that wide slide. And Amber does what Amber does. Keeps the ball in play. Seven kills, 583 percentage for Amber IGD. And Gershing to serve. Floats it down the line. Eyeball set goes to Orshoff. The dig there by Ham. IGD over on two. A little improv there from the Louisiana native. Hawaii now again playing as if they're double parked. They have somewhere to go. The girls have a place to go, so they're just getting in and out as quickly as possible. I mean, how early did they need to get out of here? Uh, 4 p.m. start time. It already started an hour earlier than usual. They must have somewhere to go. <laughs> Version goes into the net. Don't expect these matadors to sit idly by, though. They will put up a fight, but right now they're going up against a Hawaii team that just seems to be grooving at the moment. Alexander in the out-of-system swing, that one blocked by Hunter. Alexander a second time, soft touches it. The save by Orshoff. Tip shot there by Miller, what a layout save, Edmonds, and then Alexander hits it into the net. I like that last bump set by Kelsey Knudsen. That was really smooth to the right side. Talia Edmonds once again giving up her body to keep the rally alive. Edmonds now with two digs. It always seems like she has more than what the stat line actually shows in those instances. She has three aces though and two assists, but she is just all over the floor getting touches. Oh, an overpass by Hawkes. And an easy put down for Taylor Hunter. Taylor Hunter, who was born in Ann Arbor, Michigan, before relocating to California, was a three year starter at Oak Park High School. Lang going outside, Hawkes bangs it through the block and down. And Hawaii back up a deuce. Didn't Hawkes look comfortable out there on the left? I mean, she'll play anywhere just to get on the floor, but I really like the way she plays on the left. Looks like she's going to go there again now for transition. Kate Lang will be on the right. Another good serve. Lang tried to knuckle it down. Little pinball action on the CSUN side. Miller is blocked. Knudsen, bump set. Orshoff cross court and down. That was a tough angle. And she got it down in front of Amber IGD.
I think it bumps at that time by Benson. Seems like trying to stay close. They're, they're, they're scrappy, they're feisty, they're trying to stay in this. That's a good pass by Gershing. Evans is blocked back. Edmonds now with the bump set. Hakas off the fingertips of the block, dug up by Knudsen. Right side, that's Barron. And she caught it in the sweet spot, but she hit it long. No touch up front. And a point for Hawaii, eight serving six. That was an opportunity that presented itself for CSUN to tie this thing up in the third. She didn't miss by much. Now Kate Lang with the variety of serves. That one tight to the net. And it's going to be a violation against CSUN, so point for Hawaii. That was a 50-50 ball, and so to her credit, Evans went ahead and tried to put it down and then got into a veritable joust with a back row player. However, that was the ruling. John Price is going to argue that maybe that wasn't the case. Yeah, I think, that, uh, I'm wondering if the... Center was back row because I know Barron's in the front right now. So I'm not sure. Well, maybe he's saying that the setter was below the net. No. Unless he's arguing that the ball was still on the CSUN side and that that should have been an interference call against Evans. I think the ball had crossed the vertical plane, looked to me like. Look at John Price. Name to the position of director of women's volleyball in June of 2022. About 14 years at Cal State Bakersfield, taking them from Division II to Division I. That was a pretty interesting time for him. He was also head coach for the CSUN men's program for a dozen years from 1986 to 1997. He's been in this game for some time. And it was with the men's program. He had to commute from Bakersfield because he's already settled there back to Northridge every day. A little Short little hour and a half drive. Oh, the block is up. Barron has it returned to sender. Well, continuing to put up a pretty good block. That time it was Tally Hawkins. She got all of that one. Yeah, all by herself, too. Warshoff got a little handcuff there. High ball set goes to Barron. The dig by Gershing, you gotta like seeing that. Back row set goes to Gershing, had to just talk, touch it over. Outside, Barron through the block and down. Good swing by Barron to challenge the block rather than try to avoid it. She goes right up against the meat of the block there and goes, that's a field goal right through Kennedy Evans. Learned with three kills, but she is one of four Matador players currently hitting in negative numbers. Sentis with the serve. Lang going outside, it's Ham. A Ham slam, and Hawaii adds to the lead. Or a Ham sandwich. You saw our numbers right there, 444 from Friday night. Really pulling up her offense. Her defense is being flawless every night and her passing. She really needs to work on her offense. She's doing a great job of improving that. Oh, how about that pinball action on the Hawaii side? Eyeball set to Barron, blocked. The cover by Knudsen. From off the net, it's Starkey. Evans is gonna set it to Ham. Sends it long. I'm not sure that's what Robin and the coaching staff were practicing in the gym throughout the week. I think Kennedy showed some nice paws there. <laughs> Set up a nice ball. Neck, pretty nectar. Not much spin on it. Looked pretty good. You gotta love the chutzpah of even asserting herself yeah. to take on the setting responsibilities there. Oh, what a serve. Cedarlin, that one fell off of a table. He had five service aces against Cal State University Bakersfield in 22. So she can deliver from behind that service line. That's for sure. CSUN within two. Hawk 
Dukakis. Ham! How about that play? Ham coming far in from the pin and then smashing it through the block. A double quick. Kennedy Evans running in front of the setter quick. And Ham running behind the setter quick. That's a good swing at it. Nice little wrinkle in the offense. We've seen some new stuff here this weekend. Talia Edmonds with the serve, over pass, IGD. Something about when Edmonds is serving. And Hawaii tends to start moving in the forward direction. And Amber being the unselfish player that she is, is the first one to thank and congratulate Edmonds for the great serve that allowed that overpass for her to kill. Now nine kills, no errors for Igidi. Another overpass, Ham! Matches it home! Largest lead for Hawaii here in the third. What is it about this Talia Edmonds serve that seems to just create issues on the other side? You can see how much movement there was on the ball there. Took a little right turn there, there. Right as he got it over the net. That one there might be long, no. Middle set was off the mark, intended for Okolo. And Hawaii up a half dozen, first to 15 here in the third. Timeout on the floor. Talia Edmonds doing Talia Edmonds things from the service line. It's by donating to the Hawaii Community Foundation, Maui Strong. Welcome back. Rainbow Warrior football team, what a comeback victory they had last night against New Mexico State, outscoring the Aggies 17-0 in the second half to win that one, 20-17. Next week, they're on the road in Vegas, and we will be there, Spectrum Sports pay-per-view. Making it available. Out of the timeout, 16 serving nine. And again, CSUN just scrambling. After these, Talia Edmonds serves, Amber Igidi in the middle. It is becoming repetitious. 11 kills now for Amber. She's hitting, she had 11 kills, hitting almost 700. Who does that? She is error free. High ball set, goes to Starkey. Left-handed save by Lang. And a free ball going to come over. So advantage here for the Matadors to try to get out of this rotation. The dig, though, by Edmonds. Lang to Igidi. Does it again. Seven straight points for Hawaii. All behind the serving of Talia Edmonds, who seems to put the CSUN offense into out of system where the setter is off the net beyond the three-foot line almost every time. Almost another race for Edmonds. The dig there, Lang, step out, Igidi does it through the block this time, and the run continues. It just goes to show, C-Mac, you don't have to have a flame-throwing jump serve to be effective. Talia Edmonds just hitting spots. Absolutely. Robin Amo now talking to Kaleo Baxter about how long should we keep Amber Igidi in there. What has scored eight straight. Right side set, that one hit long. Was there a touch? Barron hits it out. And Hawaii gets to 20. A 9-0 run. And John Price telling us, hey look, it has been a frustrating season. We have experienced a lot of ups and downs, but he is wearing some of that frustration at the moment. Absolutely. So there's seven, five setters. Unbelievable. Overpass, Ham. I mean, this is bananas. It's all behind Talia to give her a lot of credit. Even though it's not gonna show up in the, in the scorebook. Troy Edmonds is causing all this havoc on the CSUN side of the net with these amazing serves. That's 10 in a row. 10 points in a row for Hawaii. And some subs coming in. Jason Bamis into the front row. Stella Adami also on the floor. Jackie Matias coming in to set for Kate Lang. Out 
outside. Starkey through the block to save Edmonds. Matias bumps it. Gershing tries to time it, and she gets it down. This is an onslaught. For everything going Hawaii's way right now. But the most outstanding factor, clearly, is the serving of Talia Edmonds. 3,818 through the turnstile here for this early Sunday affair. And Talia Edmonds proves her humanity by serving it out. But she hears it from the crowd after what was an 11 point run for Hawaii with Talia Edmonds at the service line. You wonder if she did that one on purpose just to uh, allow for a couple other players to get in. Could be. Matias over on two. Punched around and sent back. Matias going high and away. Gershing, that was a confident rip. And Paula Gershing with her seventh kill of the match. Jackie Matias serving. Robin Amo told us that she'd give Gershing some time this weekend, and she's making the most of it. The block is up there in the middle on Okolo. Tapped over by Gershing. The tip shot drops. That one just curled over the extended fingertips of Jason Bamis. Nice play there by Perry Starkey. Smart play by Starkey. She was, she was looking at four hands across. A rainbow wall would have been tough to, to, uh, to get through, but the tip shot worked perfectly. 11 serving 23. Taylor Ikenaga on the floor. And that cross court bump set by Gershing it was a little overcooked there. And so a point for CSUN. This is the 33rd meeting between these two programs. Hawaii leading 30 to 2 in the all time series record, and they've won the last 16 in a row. And that's an out serve. And so the fans, a little over 3,800, will rise here on match point. 24 serving 12. And what has been a dominant performance by the Rainbow Wahine. Gershing on the serve. Miller, cross court and wide. And that is it. Hawaii takes it, a kahi, a lua, aloha, to improve the 2-0 oh in Big West Conference play. When we come back, we will have your players of the match, and we will hear from head coach Robin Amo. It's the loss to TCU. They take this one over CSUN, 25, 13, 14, and 12. Scott Robbs is with Robin Amo. Hey, thanks a lot, Kanal coach. Congratulations. You accomplished a couple of things, I thought, this weekend. Number one, you won both your matches, but also number two, and you talked to us about this, wanted to give extended playing time to see how some of the uh, different combinations some of the other players did. What were your thoughts on that? Yeah, I thought they did great coming in. You know, some of them, the first time they're playing, uh, I thought they did great. And then we can still interchange left and right, our outsides. Uh, Paula was right, then she went left. And now that Stella goes in, Paula goes right. I mean, it's good. It's good for them, good experience. I know you talked to a lot of the starters and said, hey, come on, you guys, get, get the job done early so we can give these other players an opportunity. Did you give that same speech again today? I'll call it the CMAC speech. <laughs> <laughs> I give them before, not after, but yeah. All right, next week on the road, first match against Long Beach State. We know they beat Texas earlier this year. Your, your thoughts heading on the road for the first time in conference play? Uh, I, I'm not too worried. The, the girls usually travel good. Um, I know they're going to get up for the game, uh, and that's just about playing our side, so we'll see. Good luck. Thank you. Bye, guys. All right, good luck. Thanks a lot, Scott, and thanks a lot, Robin. Bank of Hawaii presents the players of the match. EA Okolo getting the nod for CSUN. Was one of the few hitters that hit in positive numbers. Four kills, 231. And how about Paula Gershing coming out party? Perhaps seven kills. 400 was her percentage. One block and three digs. Maybe a sign of things to come here for the rest of this season, C-Mac. Yeah, really a bright spot to be sure. We could have given the game the game ball to uh, Amber Igidi who had 13 kills, no errors, hit 722. But the story of the night really was Paula Gershing and how well she played. 
We're finally healthy, finally playing well, hitting that well on the left side. <clears throat> also hits well on the right side. And we could also give, could have given a game ball to uh, Talia Edmonds, who went on that 10-point run, yeah. which was unbelievable. Congratulations, Taylor. All right. Uh, would you like to uh, shed any more light on the CMAT conversation and what that entails? Well, Robin was just talking to me about, <laughs> about uh, she always scolds the team afterwards about not playing well and disrespecting the opponent or not playing hard enough. I said, and she always would scold them afterwards. I said, hey, try to switch that same speech to before and say, starters, you owe it to the B-side to play well so you can give them more time. Well said, and uh, yes, vintage C-Mac. <laughs> I love it. All right, don't forget about the post-game show. They will break down a successful opening weekend in the Big West Conference for the Rainbow Wahine. But for now, for Chris McLaughlin, I'm Kanoa Leahy. Maui, we love you. Until next time, we bid you aloha from Manoa. I like to watch season conference play. We start off, of course, with Amber IGD. Why not? Led the way with 13 kills. Get this, she hit 722 on the night. That is insane. How about the Hawaii block game? Hawaii with five blocks and a three-set victory. The leader with four was Kennedy Evans, who has put up a pretty nice wall here this season for the University of Hawaii. And how about Paula Gershing, the transfer from Youngstown State and the German native had a terrific breakout night. Seven kills on 15 swings, hit 400 in her most extensive playing time of the year. And Talia Edmonds went on a number of scoring runs behind the service line for the University of Hawaii. The young lady finished with three service aces, but it was more than just that. Forcing CSUN out of rotation on a number of serve received strengths. The overpass away taking advantage. UH clicking on all cylinders here on a Sunday afternoon as they easily take care of business against CSUN. From Spectrum Sports, it's the Hawaii Honda Dealers post game show. Hi everybody, thanks for sneaking around. Scott, Lisa, Ryan, Hawaii goes to 9-4 and four overall, 2-0 in the Big West Conference after a three-set sweep over the Matadors of CSUN, a match that probably was the easiest of the year for Hawaii. Well, Hawaii, just from the service line, they just put so much pressure. They just dominated this team, literally hitting a crazy offensive uh, run by all of them, as well as just a great cohesive team effort really putting CSUN in a tough position. They hit negative the first two, two uh, sets mm -hmm. and then they hit zero. So Hawaii, tons of experience and tons of playing time for lots of players. Yeah, I think one of the things that we also just saw was just the overall consistency from this team. And oftentimes you can tell by the consistency is by the number and the hitting percentage and Hawaii hitting 402 for the night. So they minimize the errors, especially from the outside. And Amber IGD, uh, you know, as you mentioned in that stat line, 13 kills, no errors, hitting 722. She really is the dominant player in this conference. If we take a look at some of her highlights, she will be the player of the year in the conference. Uh, I, you know, there's just not many players that can really match her physicality and her ability to mix shots up with her tip shot. She has just become this all-American presence for the Wahine. You know, a lot of folks will say, well, why are you playing a team like CISA? Well, number one, you don't have a choice because they're in your conference. But number two, you know, another thing would be, oh, you can't get better. But I, I disagree because we saw Rob in the last two matches taking advantage of the opposition and no disrespect to them, but getting an opportunity to put in players that haven't had a lot of playing time to see different rotations. I think it was nothing but a positive weekend in that aspect for sure. And I agree. I think that's the th thing about coaching. You do grow as well. Not only do your players grow and then go, but as a coach, you learn as well. And I think she's seen a lot through her years here at the university as a player, as a coach, as an All-American, as an Olympian. And I think she's realizing that so much of this goes into listening a little bit to others along the way. And I think she really, I mean, she really does give CMAC a lot of credit mm -hmm. for saying, I'm going to talk to my players before the match about this instead of after. And look, <laughs> look at the energy that it's generated for the team. Well, I think one of the other things that benefit from playing a team like CSUN is you're able to work on different things that could become more of a normal part of the system. We saw a lot of the combinations of that short and deep serve, Kate Lang serving area two right front and then going back 
Uh, they did a lot of that. They did a variation of sort of that yo-yo serving. We also saw a back one uh, that was run to Kendra Ham. We've never saw see the double quick uh, so far this season. So they're working on different things and elements in the offense and just the overall game plan that they maybe not aren't allowed to do, say, against a team like UCLA. Mm -hmm. uh, but these types of teams allow for that. All right, as we go to break, let's take a look at the final numbers from this victory for the University of Hawaii. Don't go anywhere, because when we come back, the Germanator, Paula Gershing, will join us here in the corner. But look at that, a season-high 402 hitting percentage for the University of Hawaii. Really dominated in pretty much every aspect, as you would imagine. In fact, CSUN did not even register a block as Hawaii wins at 25, 13, 14, and 12. Welcome back to the Hawaii Honda Dealers post-game show. Back in Manoa, where Hawaii took care of business this afternoon over CSUN, winning in three. There you see one of the seven kills on the night for Paula Gershing, the transfer from Youngstown State via Germany, who joins us now in the corner. And first off, congratulations. You're getting more, Thank you. you're getting more and more playing time which means it looks to me at least, you're feeling more and more comfortable out there with your teammates. I do, I do, yeah. It's, it's been rough because I was injured in the beginning and so it was hard, to me, hard for me to like get in like the team and like, I don't know, get like used to it, but um, it's getting better and it's, oh yeah, I, I'm feeling more comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Share with the viewing audience a little bit about why you chose to come to Hawaii. Um, well, first I chose to transfer because of volleyball and um, I don't know, obviously Hawaii is a great program and um, I visited three schools and Hawaii was one of them and it was just, the, honestly it was the visit, it was like a gut feeling. I don't, I don't have a like crazy reason, like obviously there's so many great things, um, but I would say all schools have great things, but just a gut feeling. I, I really like the coaches, I, I obviously like Hawaii, like warm weather, I never lived in a place like Hawaii and um, and the community, I never seen so many people watch a volleyball game. Like even like the pro league in Germany, like women's volleyball, I never seen so many people watch a game. I guess like some games, but wow. normally like this, this is really cool. Yeah. 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 yeah great experience overall. Yeah. You know, when you look at just the evolution so far for you this season, you mm -hmm. came in, played a little bit on the right earlier in the season. Yeah. Now six rotations tonight on the left. Uh, there's a lot of competition for that those outside hitting spots. Yeah. Uh, how do you think that's going and how has that helped all of you folks maybe elevate your game knowing that all of you can contribute? Yeah, um, I I really like that we have so many, like so much competition on the outside and we don't have like a certain right side so we all compete like for all three like um, positions. So. Um, I don't know, I think it just helps everyone to like get better because you know you have to compete against your own teammates and um, that's actually one of the things I was looking for. So like that you had to compete against like your own players, like your own teammates um, because I think that makes you better. Like I like, for example, Riley is a great um, defender and uh, passer and I always like look what she's doing so I can like get better in it. Um, so yeah, I don't know, I think it helps everyone to like compete against your own teammates. I'm just wondering, growing up in Germany, how old were you when you started playing volleyball and what other sports did you grow up playing? Um, I swam for like eight years, maybe, yeah, eight years. Um, and I did some track and field. I actually did some break dance. <laughs> but <laughs> that was like maybe one year, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, swimming was like the main sport that I did. Um, and then I started playing volleyball when I was 12. Okay. Because my whole family plays volleyball. <laughs> have you always been an outside hitter? Ah, uh, yeah. You have? Yep. And talk to us a little bit about your pregame ritual. What do you do to prepare? <laughs> I know there's things that, I mean, because you're from a different country, so I know there's I, different things. I actually have no ritual. Like, I, like, I obviously look at the scouting report, like, but besides that, nothing specific. No food, I know that, no I, music. No, no, I know that a lot of people have, like, things they do, but I honestly... Don't. No, just, I actually just, have nothing. You just break, break out in a break dance before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can, you, can you spin on your head? No, oh, no, okay. I really can't do anything. I... All right, before we go, I, I'm sure there's got to be some family back in Deutschland yeah. watching you, if you could give them a shout out. And also, what's the one food you miss from home the most? 
Oh my god, I have my um, favorite food. My mom always makes it for me on my birthday. Can I say it in German? Absolutely, ja. <laughs> okay. Um, it's Kartoffelbrei mit Bratensauce und Schweineländer. And I love it. I love it. <laughs> Isn't that like ham or something? <laughs> no, it's like, um, I don't even know what's in English, honestly. <laughs> I don't know what's in English. I know mint means with. <laughs> it's pork. It's pork. Oh, pork, okay. Mm -hmm. Very Some, good. Sometime. And how about a shout out to your fam? Yeah, um, can I say it in German? Yeah. Absolutely. Hallo Mama, um, ich danke dir, dass du mich immer unterstützt. Ich habe dich ganz doll lieb und um, Hannah, du auch. Ich um, freue mich immer, wenn ich mit euch telefonieren kann und ohne euch wäre das alles nicht möglich. Und ja, hab euch lieb. Perfect. You want to tell us what you said? Um, I just said that I love them and uh, that I'm grateful that I always can talk to them and um, that I wouldn't be here without them. Awesome. Well, congratulations tonight. I'm sure we'll have you in the corner again sometime this season. And uh, a good win. Good luck on the road next week. Thank you. All right, Paula Gershing, our guest right here in the corner. She and her teammates take care of business in three.